Guys, the moment of truth has come. Nest 2025 is in just two days. You might be feeling stressed out. You might be feeling pressurized. You might be feeling worried, confused, irritated, frustrated. All of this is normal. What I'm going to tell you here, how exactly you can approach the questions in the exam, what exactly the strategy should be that you need to carry in the exam itself and how to maintain yourself. <laughs> So hello everyone, my name is Samir Prakash, Nizer alumnus. At this moment, it's very important to talk to yourself and I'm just talking to you as your elder brother. So don't uh, take me as a stranger or anything like that. Uh, I have also qualified NEST examination. I appeared twice. Uh, after class 12th, I wasn't able to qualify. What mistakes did I do? You know, how did I carry myself that I was not able to qualify? I had to take a drop. And uh, after the drop year, I worked on myself. Um, cleared Nest with a very, 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 very good rank, got into Nizer and now here talking to everyone, right? So stay tuned uh, till the end of the video because we are talking straight to the point. I'm speaking straight from my heart um, to help you out, to give you confidence, to give you faith. And um, this is going to be a direct, direct conversation. So let's talk about three things. Number one, how can you attempt questions? What approach should you be adopting in the exam itself? Number two, that how to maintain yourself, okay? Number three, in the exam, when you feel that, okay, not all questions are solved and uh, even from the topics that you have your strength in, right? Then at that moment, how to navigate your game, how to give yourself confidence and how to finish the next examination with enough number of questions that gets you selected at NYSER or CEBS Bombay. It's very important to realize that basically you can get away with three subjects only. It can be PCM, PCB, or any, uh, you know, combination of three subjects out of four. You don't even have to touch the fourth one, okay? If you are confident and sure short in your three subjects, let's say PCM or PCB, all these subjects are going to have 20 questions. Three marks for the correct answer, one mark for wrong answer, one negative mark. Let's start with physics. And let me tell you that all of the things that we'll be discussing basically assumes that you need to around uh, score 30 questions correctly for uh, 90 marks to get into NYSER or CABS. But uh, in physics, if I tell you, you know, uh, at least three to four questions are going to be solvable if you, I mean, they will be disguised as trickier, lengthy questions, paragraph based, um, you know, lengthier options, figures, all those things. You need not be worried about them, okay? When you go through the paper, eventually you will be able to find and sort those questions, okay? You just read the paper. You will be able to find those questions, okay? Those three to four questions which can be easily solved, okay? They won't be needing uh, much calculation. They won't be needing uh, multiple concepts. Let's say a question comes from electrical circuit, okay? It may look complicated. Some ratio, some uh, current or something is, you know, needed to be found uh, at certain point in time. It can be charging, discharging of a capacitor, anything like that, okay? Those kind of questions, sometimes they might look scarier, okay, in the first look that, uh, let's say, magnetic field is also involved, some wedge is sliding from here and there, you need to find out. The first thing you need to tell yourself is, do not get scared, okay? Just wrote, write down the information, just mention it, just collate it on the scribble pad that you have. All the info that you have, uh, velocity, parameter, magnetic field, electric field, uh, resistance, everything and immediately like train your mind, tell your mind to navigate in all directions, okay, 360 degrees, like a police siren, you do, 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 that, okay, collect all the, you know, relations and formulae <coughs> related to the information that we have in the question. Now, just put everything in picture, okay, and try to figure out, okay, what exactly is this trying to ask you? How exactly can this be done? There will be multiple things that will be coming to your mind, okay? And you just uh, figure out, just cancel out, okay, just pick the best option, the best approach that uh, can be put to use to solve that particular question, okay? In this case, we have a question from electrostatistics, containing magnetic field, containing some mechanics part. So basically, at the core, it's an electric, uh, uh, you know, electrodynamics question with perturbations or external influences from mechanics won't have much change. It's just that uh, some equations will change, diffraction and you know other things will come. If there is magnetic field, the force component will change. 
due to the magnetic field, okay, the effect of sometimes Lorentz force can get involved. So those things uh, you don't have to worry much about, okay, just uh, be calm, be confident and that is why uh, 3 hour 30 minutes uh, are given to you for, the, for 3 subjects in NEST, okay. This is more than enough to solve 30 equations in, you know, uh, the overall paper, okay. So that is how you uh, get done with 3 to 4 to 5 questions in physics. Now you are left with around 20 to 25 questions, right, to solve, okay. You switch to chemistry. Possibly the maximum number of questions you're going to solve will be in chemistry, okay, 10 to 12 questions. Out of that, you know, 6 to 8 will be comparatively easy to moderate. You will see the question, you will read it, um, you will immediately know what do you need to do to get to the answer, okay. It can be writing a mechanism for an organic reaction, it can be doing some calculations, it can be a question from thermodynamics, um, options will be trickier, okay, because there is not much you can do in physical chemistry. It's just that uh, they will change the system, instead of two vessels, they, they will have three vessels, they will have one vessel, they will be insulating it, it will be like there will be frictionless piston, there will be friction full piston. So these kind of minor changes they can do at most and uh, accordingly the options will change. So if you have done previous equations, you might be able to recall these kind of equations as well in chemistry. So in physical chemistry, just keep this in mind that there won't be much fluctuations in terms of equations in comparison to physics. Physics, uh, you have a lot more intermixing of concepts, questions, okay, like I said, in electrostatics, a mechanics question can also come, right. But in chemistry, there won't be much, much of this going on in physical chemistry. In kinetics, there must be, you know, most uh, of the times they'll be asking you about a plot or something like that reaction. In, in that reaction, there will be, instead of two reactants, there will be three reactants, multiple of them, something you need to do, right. Uh, from solutions, they can also ask something like that, right. Uh, freezing point depression, Raoult's law, something like that. They just, what at most can they do? They can just complicate the system, okay? The fundamentals remain same. The formula remains same. The concept remains same. The system changes, okay? So NEST needs you to think from first principles, okay? You just build from scratch. Okay, in this situation, how does this work? If there is a vessel, okay, um, it's an adiabatic system, insulated, Okay, it will literally tell you in the question, it, it's an insulated uh, vessel. It won't tell you it's adiabatic, no heat exchange is going on. You need to think, okay, insulated vessel means no heat coming in, going out, right? So we will treat this system as a adiabatic system or accordingly as per the other information given in the question itself. Don't try to solve any question at once unless it's very, very, very easy. You just step by step determine the next step, the next relation, the next formula, the next concept and you deduce the answer. Okay, in NEST, uh, most of the times you're not solving any question, you're actually deducing the answers. Why? Because multiple steps are involved in any kind of systems and systems are usually complicated, not that trivial as you study in the books. Concept will be same, principles will be same. That is why you tend to think on those principles, but solve complicated systems, okay? If you have done the previous equations, you can understand what I mean, what I'm saying here right now, okay? So that is how you uh, get done with six to eight to nine questions, or even 10 questions from chemistry related to inorganic or uh, sometimes anomalies can also come from chemical binding, co coordination compounds, some good question can come, okay? Crystal field splitting, uh, all that sort of stuff. So now you're done with around 15 to 16 questions from physics and chemistry combined in the first go. Okay, and ideal time it should take you to do this is around uh, 1.5 hours. Okay, so you still have around uh, two hours left in your hand. Okay, so 1.5 to two hours and you're done with 15 questions. If you can do it in almost half the time of the examination or slightly less than that, then the level of confidence you're going, going to get is insane, okay? Uh, you're already ahead of most of the people appearing into the next examination. And believe me, you, you would already be seeing at this point in time, most of the people in your exam hall sleeping, okay? Because they won't be able to solve these many questions in the exam. But the approach I'm telling you, I'm sharing with you right now at this moment, is going to take you to 15, 20, 25 questions. Okay, physics chemistry is done. Maths is left if you're a PCM student. Let's say as a PCM student, I have my third and last option, which is maths, okay? There are 20 questions. I need to get corrected eight to 10 or more questions if time permits and if I have, uh, you know, the right composure and knowledge to solve those questions. Maths also, 
assuming I'm a decent student, uh, solved PYQs, attempted some mocks, and even like even just if I have gone through the previous uh, 50 important questions of our uh, Syastra series or one shot lectures, assuming that I have uh, you know done decently calculus, um, some algebra, some coordinate geometry, I'm not an expert, not a dumps either, decent knowledge. Even with that use, okay, you will be able to find three to five questions that can be solved. Okay, again, disguised as very complicated, tough. Questions won't be much lengthier in maths, okay, they will be straightforward that this equation or some curves intersecting, okay. Or even in this form that you will be given some integral. Integral won't be much hard or some limit as a integral, something like that. Okay, there will be a lot of disguise going on. And the solutions will be hidden in a relation. Okay, you need to find that out. So here relation is used, uh, that, that, that limit is used, sometimes integral is used. These kind of questions will be there for sure. Okay, this is just in calculus. Algebra also you will be given, you know, many questions like this. Uh, in terms of P and C, sometimes probability. Probability, these recently uh, hard questions are coming. So be careful about that. Don't waste too much time. Do not waste there. If any question comes from complex numbers, uh, you know, um, quadratic equations, binomial theorem, definitely attempt that. Okay, definitely attempt that because not much is going to change. Like I said, only the systems are going to change. What are the systems here? The equations, the phenomenon, okay, that is presented to you in the question itself. That can change at most. If you spend 2 to 2.5 minutes, you will definitely be able to uh, get to the ground level of the question. Okay, what it wants you to do. Then you can do that. Okay, it can be using graphs, it can be location of roots, it can be something else. Okay, like I said, always do this, like uh, get your mind rotating in 360 direction, like a police siren. Whenever you see a question, you write down the information given in the question. So, doing this from algebra, calculus, two questions each, I'm assuming you will be able to do. Uh, of course, one to two questions will be very, very easy, can be related to prime numbers, or they can simply ask you the value of pi, <laughs> that is possible, okay. Um, so, four to six question can be done, okay. So, so far we have done, uh, from physics we have done again four to six, maths also we have done four to six, chemistry we have done eight to ten question. So, how much does this become, can you tell me? So 4 to 6, 4 to 6, uh, around 8 to 12. Now, 20 to 24 questions. Okay, worst case scenario, if you're not able to solve any more question than that, you have done your best. Okay, you have chances of getting into NYSER. 20 to 24 question means you will be getting around 70 marks. You're almost on the borderline. May get selected, may not get selected, may get into the merit list, but may not get a seat or a rank below 300. For that, we need to do those deciding, okay, uh, five to eight questions more. And now, the best part in NIST that you can see is those deciding questions, four to six that you need to do, they are not just four to six. The pool itself, okay, is uh, 16 in physics, 14, 13 in maths, and 10 in chemistry. So, it means that from the pool of uh, 30 to 40 questions, you need to do six to eight more questions. Isn't it amazing? Okay. We have so far thought from first principles. We have uh, utilized all the concepts that we have studied. We have solved easy to moderate questions uh, in all three subjects. Okay. And now we need to solve, like we are getting 70 marks around that. You don't need to think each and every time in the exam itself that how much marks you're getting uh, because don't dwell around the marks. Just keep in mind the number of questions you're solving correctly. Okay. Because most of the times you'll, you will get a feel that okay, this is the right answer. Give and take two to three questions you will be attempting wrongly. Okay, so in that pool of 32, 35 questions, pick eight to 10 questions more, okay, you need to solve. And now you will be having around uh, one hour or so left in your hands. I'm very liberal with the time, okay, you will be having more than this, one hour for sure. So you need to do like six to eight to 10 more questions, which you can do because you have done these many questions so far, okay. Uh, go through the paper again, like uh, in physics, many moderate questions will be there, which you can definitely do, okay, from mechanics, from modern physics, right, and uh, from EMI AC or thermodynamics, do those questions, chemistry, uh, try to do more questions, like three to four more questions, okay, and uh, in physics, try to do two, three more questions, and similarly in maths, okay, so that is how you will, uh, it will take you to around 20 to 34 questions, boundary crossed. If you're a PCB student, 
then same thing you can do in biology. Uh, let's say Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium or uh, some decision trees that are coming in the question, okay, uh, uh, pedigrees, okay, genetics questions, uh, microbiology questions, okay. Definitely six to eight questions are uh, easy to moderate, disguise this, lengthier, trickier and harder, okay. So you can definitely attempt those questions using this strategy that we have discussed. Now, sometimes weird cases do happen, like uh, maths can be very hard for you because you have not studied. You have studied some bio for IAT, but now you are able to do some questions in biology, okay. So do not hesitate in that uh, kind of scenario as well. If you are confident, you are sure that, uh, you know, getting questions correctly in biology in your fourth subject, do not hesitate, just attempt it. You never know which of the subject is going to overtake your weakest subject, of, right? And um, you're going to get uh, a seat at NYSER by clearing the cutoff and getting a good rank. Okay, with that, but I definitely believe this video has been useful for you so far and uh, real use case will be NEST 25 uh, examination on Sunday, right? So definitely put your heart and soul into it in those 3.5 hours and uh, rock the exam. All the very best. Mm -hmm.